Hello again. Uh, as I mentioned to you before, we have a guest speaker. His name is Pastor Young Do Kang. Um, I will let him introduce his ministry, but um, he's been a dear friend of mine back way back when, 2002-ish. So um, yeah, we, we studied together, um, we served together, we would kind of do ministry together in some form and, um, uh, or another. And uh, it's it just, I'm glad that um, Pastor Yongdo followed his passion to serve people in the city that we have a hard time reaching out to. And we might feel intimidated, intimidated to reach out to. So he, he's been doing that. He's a, he's a bit of an outlier. We all knew that he, was a, he had a little bit of a gangsterness to him. And uh, God used that to his glory and advantage. So I'm just going to invite Pastor Yongdo to come forward. Thanks, John. John doesn't tell you that when we studied together, uh, he didn't want to study with me because he thought I would be distracting. And then, then I got higher marks than John. <laughs> it worked out. Um, all right. I know that when you get, you know, when every church kind of gets new, like gets a guest preacher, people don't know him or her. And so you're like, you know, what's their theology? And, you know, what's their personality like? How do they preach? And things like that. Do they like Sangip style after service? And like, yes, the answer is yes and things like that. So, but I hope you can kind of put those aside and, and we'll just focus hopefully on what God wants to share today. And that to do that, I'd like to start a certain way. Uh, can we just, can we pray? Okay. And I, it's a kind of a, I, I do this thing where it's like a three-step prayer, so I'll guide you through it, but let, let's pray. Can you first pray just between you and God about you and God? Yeah, we'll give you like 30 seconds. If you need to say thank you or sorry or help me understand this message, whatever. Just you and God about you and God. You keep praying, but if you're done praying about you, can you pray for one or two people around you, either beside you or behind you, in front of you? Uh, you are a church. You're in this together. So pray for each other. And finally, because you're a Christian, if you know someone, an individual person or a group of people that don't know Jesus, do a quick prayer for them as well. Father God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the great things they are doing uh, within each other, but also in the way they support missions. Um, may you move their hearts. May you open their minds, Father God. May you just continue to bless them, and may they be a tremendous blessing, Lord, to each other uh, and to others in the city and around the world, Lord. Um, thank you so much for them, uh, and more than the words that kind of come out of my mouth and words that go in their ears, may your spirit work in their hearts this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Could you be on mission? And I know a lot of times, and I was like this too, if someone asked, could you be on mission? We're like, <gasps> no. Because we just think of, a, we think of mainly like three things, right? We think of, I don't want to go to India or Africa. Like, I don't want to go overseas, right? Or, well, I, I, can't, I can't tell people about Jesus. I just, it's, just, it's just not, I'm nervous. I can't do that. I don't know what to say. Or, I don't know how to defend the faith. What if they ask hard questions? I don't know what the answers are. I wouldn't know how to explain things. And oftentimes we use those things and we think about how we can't or don't want to go overseas. We don't know the answer is a tough question. We don't know those things. And, said, and so, but what if I were to come and tell you, what if you don't have to do any of those things? What if you could be on mission without doing those things? Could you then be on mission? Right? Um, in reaching the Samaritan woman, who in turn helped reach her town for Jesus, Jesus, uses the disciples, Jesus tells the disciples the metaphor of the sower and the, and the, you know, the harvester, right? the reaper. Right? And I always think it's funny because so many times we live in a city, we don't actually know these farming, <laughs> farming metaphors. You know? You know, we get a fruit, we get, a, we get an apple and we just go to the store, it's like, ooh, a nice red apple. You know? I remember a time where I asked somebody, an actual farmer, and said, how long does it take to plant a seed and it actually becomes a tree that you can eat an apple? And that guy was like, ah, about 15 years. And in that time, there's everyone's working. There's people who plant, people who plant the seed, people who water the seed, people who prune the plant, people who have to pick the apples and put it in the baskets and sell it all, and all those things, right? 
We hear the metaphor, the sower plants the seeds and then the reaper, reach, they gather the grown crops. And at the end of like, at that time, four months, both celebrate because their common goal was met. They have this great harvest. It's like a songwriter who writes a song and then passes it off to a performer. And then when that song becomes complete, they both celebrate. Or if you add more people into there, right? Songwriter writes a song, the person records it, and then there's an engineer who mixes it, makes it sound all nice, and then the song comes out and it's a big hit. You know, and it's a big hit for Blackpink, and then missionary daughters dance to it, and everyone's like, well, this is awesome, right? This is what we wanted. We all worked together, and, and it all came together, and it worked, right? And it only works, though, when everyone plays their part, right? Everyone is a link in that chain from beginning to end to make it work. And it's the same when it comes to faith. Everyone is a link in a chain of someone coming to Jesus Christ. Someone understanding that he is the Messiah. Someone coming understanding that he is the Son of God. Everyone plays a part. And they're all linked together. And that's the only way it works. Right? You see, when someone comes to Jesus, the, usually the evangelist, someone who goes in and tells them, about Jesus and says, do you want to accept Christ in your life, right? Do you believe in Jesus, that he died for your sins, right? They get all the credit. They're very important people, but they get all the credit, right? But before that person goes up, there's been like, they, you know, before they go up and kind of seal the deal, there's been like 10, 20, 30 people before them warming them up to that message. There's a chain of people who played a part. They either prayed for them, they shared scripture with them, they were really nice to them, you know. Um, they invited them to church. They were consistently polite and nice. Whatever they did with the intention of this person needs Jesus, I'm going to play my part, and they do it. And it's necessary. Each of those things are necessary, right, for them to know Jesus. For all of us here that believe in Jesus, is it, am I doing something here? Am I doing something wrong? It just can't handle sexy voices. Is that what it is? It's, it's not built for that. Um, yeah. You know, all of us here, when we think about how we know Jesus, if you really thought about it, you probably could imagine, oh, because this person, this church did this, and this preacher did this, and this worship person did this, and then my Bible study teacher did this, and my parents did this, or my friend did that. And you can pick all these people that had some subtle or obvious impact in how you came to Christ. They were all part of this chain. That's why each of you, each of you, are necessary for someone else to know Jesus. You are all part of the chain for somebody. We all have something that you can do intentionally and proactively and consistently for them to come to Christ, to help them move them forward. But there is a note here. They have to know that you're a Christian. Because if you're like, well, I'm just going to be really nice to them, but you don't mention that you're a Christian, or you don't say anything about church, or you don't do that kind of stuff, they're just going to think because you grew up Asian, or grew up Canadian, or you had really nice parents, right? You have to intentionally let them know that you're a Christian, so that when they see your good things that you do for them, right? when they know you're praying for them, when they know these things, and they, and they see that about you, or they experience that with you, there's an association of, oh, because they're a Christian. Oh, because of Jesus. Your church, as you've heard from that video, right? Your church has a huge, there's a big link in the chain than the ministry that I do, in the mission that I do. Through your prayers and through your support. I had an event last, uh, two events last November, and your church helped sponsor it, right? That's partly why I gave John this, or maybe I should give it to Bonnie instead, but it's a graffiti spray can. We had our event sticker on it and just as a thank you, as a souvenir for the event. Right? It is full. Just letting you know, in case anybody. There's a safety lock on it, though, so you can give it to the kids. All right. God has me on a mission to reach the hip-hop community with the gospel. If you're not familiar with this kind of often unreached group, you might know them from their elements, what's called the elements, or their artistic expression. Right? You have... Rapping, or it's really emceeing, DJing, breaking, which is going to be in the Olympics in the summer, and then graffiti writing. Right? And for me, with these guys and girls, 
I can be different links. Sometimes I'm the guy that's not even planting the seed. I'm the guy before that is just tilling the ground, breaking up the hard dirt to get, them, get the ready. Right? And so some of the things I do with that, I just give them space to grow their skills. Right? So I think we can have one video, maybe. We open up a gym at my church, and we let them, we have breakdancing practices or breaking sessions. We just come in, turn on some music, let them practice. Right? And that's it. It's not a bait and switch. Just Let me just bless you all. And some of these guys really are like, they've come in before and they'll be like, oh, this is a church? Like, yeah? Are we allowed to do this in here? Uh, yeah. Like, okay. But you see their hardness of what they thought church was kind of start to come down. Okay. We also recently started graffiti practice sketches, uh, sessions. So some guys want to learn graffiti, we just sit there with paper and pen. And uh, yeah, because if they spray in the bathrooms of the church, I'll kill them, all right? Okay. Uh, one thing new that we're going to do, hopefully, this year is uh, we're going to have um, a graffiti jam. I've never put one on before, so please pray for me that that goes okay, right? Right in Mel Aspen Square in September, we're going to do, like, temporary boards and temporary walls, and people, we're going to invite people to come and spray paint, do that stuff, just to bless them with a the space to legally do their art, you know? We also go to breaking jams, the big breakdancing events, and we support them. That's it. We're just there to cheer them on, do great, awesome stuff. Right? But sometimes in tilling the field, I'm also the guy that gets to plant seeds. So at that picture on the right, we give away Bibles for free. Right? We purchase a merchandise table. We don't have any merchandise. We just put a sign, free Bibles, put the Bibles there, and then leave. Because if we stay there at the table like this, they don't come up. They don't want to talk to me or Christians. <laughs> So we just leave, right? And then we come back at the end of the night, count the Bibles, and some are taken, right? Yeah. Then we check the garbage cans, they're not in there, like, they're really taken, right? So we, we do that, right? So we're happy about that, right? So we give away Bibles at the jams. Uh, sometimes they ask questions, and so we talk to them about Jesus, and there's one guy who we're at, we're at a jam, and he's like, just kind of in the corner secretly, and that waves me over, and he just wanted me to pray for him. So, okay, cool, you know, you get those opportunities. Um, one thing we developed a couple years ago, I think, is we have monthly church services now, online church services. So uh, we have one tonight, so it's once a month, where we have a DJ, and he cuts and spins records, and then we have a testimony, and then we have a teaching, and, you know, all with music, hip-hop music and stuff like that, right? So sometimes I'm the guy that tills the field. Sometimes I'm the guy that gets to plant the seeds. Sometimes I'm the guy that waters the plants, right? And so every, week, every Sunday, other than that, we have Bible studies online as well. And we got guys from, we have people from like Canada, the U.S., Puerto Rico, Philippines. You know, Zoom calls, you, you kind of get everybody from all over the world there. Um, I'll meet with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, over a meal. Uh, if they pay, it's over a meal. If I pay, it's over coffee, right? But um, we'll meet with people one-on-one, -on -one, just counseling, discipling, seeing how they're doing and stuff like that. Uh, and once a year, like I said, one of the events that, that you guys help sponsor is we have once a year uh, fellowship, uh, conference. These are four people that are already Christian in the hip-hop world because oftentimes when you're both hip-hop and Christian, you feel very lonely because you're like, I don't really fit over here 100%. And at the same time, I don't really fit over here 100%. And so we just kind of gather them together and say, hey, we're all, we're all weird. Let's just be weird together, right? Let's just fellowship and network and those kind of things. Right? Sometimes I'm the guy that gets to help other people be farmers and do their job, right? Uh, we have an annual breaking, we do an annual breaking event as well. Uh, we've done it twice, and uh, usually when you go to a breaking jam, you have to pay money to kind of enter the competition. We got sponsors, like you guys, and um, we just asked them, instead of paying money, can you bring food for a food bank? And so we're getting them to be a blessing to other people, right? We collected a lot of food and a lot of shoes for a local breaking uh, breaking youth breaking program. And so we get to do these kind of amazing things, you know. Um, what I'm so thankful for is that we now have a team. I was doing this my, by myself for like 10 years. Uh, now we have a team of guys, right? And so we have two guys, two guys there that are in Calgary, two guys in Toronto, me, and then one guy at the right hand of the father. Okay. Um, yeah. But all these guys, we have a, the D, one of the guys out in Calgary, I think the next one, um, 
he has once a month DJ scratch sessions. So they either go to like a bar or somewhere else. Sometimes he has them at his house. He just invites all the DJs and they just sit and scratch and cut records and do all that kind of stuff and practice. And he gets to talk to them about Jesus sometimes or he'll give them Bibles sometimes and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a b-boy there now in Calgary who moved from Cameroon and he moved to Calgary um, and he's helping reach the, the break dancers, the breakers in Calgary there. Uh, I think he's in that picture. Yeah, he's the one on the right in that burgundy-ish hoodie. Uh, and whenever he goes to breaking jams, I think he always wears a hoodie because it says the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus Christ right on it. He has no, he has no fear. <laughs> he just goes, I'm Jesus. Like, Jesus is, loves you and just goes out, right? Um, and then we have rappers and our MCs here in Toronto reaching other MCs in Toronto. We're just kind of all over the place, just doing what we can to do, reach different parts and doing what we do, right? And, you know, I'm so thankful to Bridgeway Church because, because of you guys, I'm able to do this full time. I'm able to do all these different things, till the ground, plant the seed, water the plants, harvest, help other people. I can do all that. I can be all these many links in the chain because of your support. But I know that for all of you, you know, you think, I can't do all that stuff. And I get it. No one's asking you to be full-time missionary. If you were, awesome, right? But what we're asking is, can you do one thing? You don't have to till the ground. You don't have to plant the seed and water the plant and harvest and prune and do all this. Can you just help with one thing? One of those things. You can still be a link in the chain, and you would be a very necessary part in that link in the chain. The people at your work, the people at your school, the, your, the people wherever you do your hobbies, right? Uh, the people that join your church softball teams that aren't, maybe aren't Christian and they join it, you know? Um, other parents at your kids' extracurricular stuff, maybe if members of your family, or some of your good friends. Maybe some of your not so good friends. Maybe your friends, family's friends, whoever it is, there's people in your life, they need you to do something that shows them or tells them about Jesus. And you can do it. You just need to do one part. You just one link in the chain. You have to do it. And I'm not trying to pressure you, but it isn't an option. We weren't called to be just disciples. You're called to be disciples that help make other disciples. People are out there that need Jesus, and you have to do your part. And I know it's scary, and it sounds scary, and before I did this mission work, I was scared. Even doing this mission work, I'm scared all the time. Right? We have these breaking sessions. We've done it for seven years. Right? And I get to be friends with them, and I get to love them, and I could get to care for them. Even through the pandemic, when we couldn't have sessions, it was still me messaging them every week or every month and just going, hey, you doing okay? Are you doing all right? You know, and just checking in on them. Right? You know? And now I have like all these Bibles that are sitting there with the laptop that I'm going to use at session. I'm like, every day I pray, God, I'm, I'm, I'm more comfortable doing the tilling the ground. But I got all these Bibles. Help me have the courage to give it out. And help them not to hate me. You know? And you build up to it. Right? But it's just one part. And you can do your part. Right? You know? And I get it. Like we, there's people out there that won't come to this church. Won't go to any church. Doesn't matter how good your church is. They won't come. That's not their first thought. Because they, they think the wrong things about church. They don't know the right things about Jesus. Right? They fear being judged. Hip-hop guys, they fear being judged by church because of bad stereotypes. And I know that, you know, but for us, we don't want to go out there. But we have to go out there because they're not coming here. And we're scared to go out there because we're scared of being judged by them or by other Christians. Oh, I saw so-and-so over there. I saw so-and-so over there. Right? Not even so-and-so. Most of us in here are Korean, right? We have a typical name. I saw John over there. I saw Grace over there. Like, you know, there, there's names right? that we all know. Right? Gloria, Peter, like, you know, we know those names, right? You know? Or we think wrong things about their world. We have stereotypes about them. But God tells us, you have a part. And a lot of that part in the link in the chain is out there where they are. 
There are people around you. There are people around you in your life that need Jesus. And you can help them by simply doing your part. God is working in their hearts too. He does the majority of the work, but he still needs you to be that link in the chain. So whether it's praying for them, whether it's supporting them, whether it's just being kind to them, whether it be you're the person that actually tells them about Jesus and the gospel. Maybe you're someone who invites them out to coffee when you see that they're having a bad day. Maybe you're someone who invites them out to dinner when you see that they're immigrants and they don't have anybody to eat Thanksgiving with or something like that. Maybe you're the person that sees that they're having a hard time and you go cut their grass or clean their kitchen or something. And then you end it with, okay, God bless you. Maybe you're someone who goes to church. And so when you see your neighbor, it's like, hey, have a good day. And like, thanks, man. Yeah, I'm going to church. And you mention that. You just slip it in there. You know, stuff like that. Happened to me this morning. Right? I was holding a bag. And she said, you going to picnic? And I was like, do I look like it? My mind, I was like, do I look like I'm dressed to go to picnic? Right? I was like, no, no, I'm going to church. Oh, okay. You, know, um, you could be a listening ear. You could give godly advice. You could give them a Bible. You could help me run, break, come to breaking session and help me there. You could be the one to give them the Bible. <laughs> and they'll hate you. They'll still love me, right? You know, whatever. <laughs> you know, you can do that, right? Whatever it is, try something because it works. It won't work. And I know it's scary, too. And other scary things, we're like, I don't, I, can't, I don't have the time. I can't do that kind of commitment. I can't do that. You can do what I do. Not that this is like the best idea, but I just say, I'm going to try something for three months. If it doesn't work for three months, I'm like, oh, okay, it didn't work. I'll try something else for three months. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, I tried. good, kind of worked. Okay, let's tweak it. Another three months, we'll try it. Right? I don't like that commitment either. One year, whew, sounds like a lot. Three months, I can do that. There's a good enough time to evaluate. Oh, it worked. Or, oh, it didn't work. I didn't waste time for a year. But try something. Just try something. You don't need a whole plan figured out. You should try something. But it'll work. So I'd like you to try an exercise with me. A mental, not a physical, you don't have to get up. Like, it's not physical 100, right? It's a mental thing, okay? First person that comes to mind that, you, that doesn't know Jesus, who are they? Pick a person or a group of people. Pick somebody. Got it? Pick someone that you know that is a Christian that might be able to help you. It's always better to do it together. Who's somebody? Maybe it's in the church, maybe someone else you know. Who could help you? Maybe it's one person, maybe it's a group of people. Who could help you? Pick something that you might be able to try. It could be anything. Anything. I'm just going to start saying, God bless you. I'm going to start saying, thank God when something good happens. I'm going to invite them to church. I'm going to invite them to women's night. This is the last one on Wednesday, so you better hurry. Right? But, you know, those kind of things. I'm going to ask them to just come watch our softball team. I'm going to tell them about Jesus. What's the one thing you can try? You got those things so far? Who is it? Who can help? One thing you can try? When are you going to do it? That's the fourth thing. When? It's always easy to have an idea. When? Pick a date. You could think Wednesday. You could think two months from now. Pick a date. And then go do it. And then try it again. But don't worry about that until you are done the first time. And try it again. And try it again. And you're just trying things. And it'll work out. Right? And it'll be worth it because you're being obedient to God. God is just asking you to be faithful to the work. It's his job to make the work fruitful. Just do your part. Be that link in the chain. Then at the end, when they believe, you and all the other links in the chain, you guys can celebrate together because that person came to believe. Can we pray again? Maybe hearing this, you kind of got worries or fears or maybe you're excited. 
you and God, just you and God. Give you a minute. Talk to him about it. Share your thoughts. Share your feelings. And put all your worries and all your excitement on the table before God. And keep praying, but if you're done praying, just you and God, the person or persons you prayed for earlier that's part of your church already, can you pray for them? They might be as excited or scared. They might work with you. I don't know. Pray for them again. And if you're done praying for that one or two people in your church, that person or group of people you prayed for earlier that doesn't know Jesus, can you pray for them again? For God to work in them and for all the links in the chain that need to happen. might be you. Thank you, God, for this time together. Thank you for allowing me to be here and share. Um, pray, Father God, I, um, I just thank you, Lord, for all the things that I can do within the hip-hop community. Um, you bless me with being able to be in there and do a lot of different stuff. I'm excited, always excited about it, no matter how hard it is. But Father God, I pray for everyone here uh, in this room or watching online that they may have the courage and the creativity confidence to do their part in the chain to be a link in the chain father god to other people knowing jesus so may you bless them may you guide them may you protect them may you provide for them may they be able to try something just try thank you much father we know you love us and we love you back we pray this in jesus name amen thank everyone for having me here God bless you guys.